Tell me, how did you discover that the VIN was missing from this truck? So pretty much, we made the deal sometime around the middle of January, and come around February, I have to pay off my property tax from last year because I did own two vehicles. So I tried to pay that property tax off, and I couldn't. So I had to sell my first vehicle to pay for my truck to even get me started. So then I take my truck to go get safety and emissions. I take it up to High Ridge Auto Repair. They state that this truck has already been here before, and due to the no VIN, they cannot do the inspection. By the way, did you look for the VIN number? Yes, I looked for the VIN. And where was it supposed to be on the truck? On the dash. Did it look like something was tampered with? So the whole dash was literally, it was covered up with a pad that I took off. I didn't even pay mm -hmm. attention to it when I got the truck. So I was like, crack dash, no big deal. He has a dash cover on. I never took it off. Now, why do you think the defendant made misrepresentations to you? Because he told me the truck literally had no problems. It could, I could take it and go get it legal whenever I wanted. That's how he made it out to me. Is that correct, Mr. Schumer? Correct. At the time, I didn't know. Was it a registered truck? Yes. My brother still had it registered in his name till February 23. How did you get it registered? The, the VIN number, it was broke off a little corner, and I have a photo of it, and it was just in the glove box. They put it on top of the dashboard, took a photo of it, no problem for Hunter. Did you tell the plaintiff when he complained to you that I, it was I would have if he wouldn't have been vulgar language with me, and then he told me he was going to call the cops, so I hung up the phone. But you didn't tell the plaintiff that's where it was. I didn't know it was there. It was never my truck. When you found out that when it was When I found there, out from my dad... Did you tell the plaintiff that... I was in the process of it, but he was screaming and yelling, and then he said something about calling the cops, and I'm a man. Where is the truck now? The truck's in my driveway. Did anybody ever look in the glove compartment to see if it was so there? So, yes, we did look in the glove compartment, and they still said, like, they cannot... You cannot have... Why the... did you tell me that? So, I meant to make it out as he knew the VIN number was not there. He sold me the truck with the VIN number not on the dash. But it's not his truck, so how can we say that he should have known that yeah. it wasn't where it was supposed to be, right? Correct. Correct. You have a witness with you, by the way. What oh. can you add to this? She was the one that dropped off the truck to the High Ridge Auto Repair, where they yeah. said, this truck has already been here before. They cannot do it. You want to come up and tell me what happened? Yeah. So, yeah. What's I... your name again? Michaela. Michaela. So, I took the truck on March 28th and dropped it off and to get the safety and emissions, and then they called me back and told me the truck cannot be registered or anything with it, because it's already been there, and that's already been a thing. Like, it won't happen. Now, you had the truck for two months. Yes, I did. Did you try to get it tested or the emissions taken care of so you could no, get it registered? No, I never tried to get it registered because after I had bought it, I just decided, like, you know, I don't really need it registered right now because he drove me around everywhere, so... There is a registration which indicates that the VIN number was surrendered. What is that? That was me. So oh. I took it up to Troop C, and they said, yeah, you can't... This is pretty much a loss or a stolen. So I can't even drive the truck until I get another VIN. So... I can't do anything <clears throat> with the truck. So that truck is useless to me. The truck works, right? The truck runs and drives. Yeah, the truck, there's no, there's no problem with the truck besides it has no VIN and I can't do anything with it without a VIN number or getting it registered to drive it. And what did so, you need to do to get a, the VIN number? So I had to go to Troop C and they said, oh, we'll get back to you whenever we file this, this, and this. And I sent all my paperwork up to Jeff City. So, but it is possible for you to get the VIN number and to use the truck. We just Possibly. don't know when. I don't know. Judge DeWalder? Is the truck still registered in Hunter's name? Correct. And how long had you had the truck before calling Mr. Schumann here about the VIN number? About a month and a half. When Mr. Heights asked to have his Jeep returned, you, Mr. Schumann, said he could have it for $1,000. No, no, ma'am. That's no, not when, right. he, when he called me on the phone and asked about his Jeep, uh -huh. he was just screaming and yelling, and I told him that it was out, it was out of my hands. I d it's her Jeep. It's not even mine. Did Mr. Schumann offer to return the Jeep for $1,000? Yes. This was a phone conversation? Phone conversation. And you're saying that didn't happen? No. No. So you're saying he's lying? Yep. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Schumann, you claim here that he texts you, be ready for court if that's how you want to be, and you replied, I'm sorry you feel that way, but... I'm quite confused on what the problem is. I traded you a truck. There's no problem. Apparently, you have a problem now, which after two months is not my concern. I never owned that truck, nor knew nothing about it. If you lost a piece of something you need, I'm sorry. Why didn't you just say, hey, the VIN number's in the glove box? Because he called me after that text message. After I sent that text message is when he called me. That's incorrect. Well, see, in this text, too, you take ownership of the, the whole trade.